Hey, friends, welcome back to Anti Church. Uh, these are the end times, and you are the church, and we are the church. Amen. And that Taren, is Taren. I promise, I promise, Taren, I hit your button first. Uh, I'm trying to make you, I'm trying to elevate you. <laughs> Anyways, that's Taryn, and that's oh. Pastor Anderson, and of course, Manti. And uh, we are here for you, for the church. We're going to talk about end time prepping tonight. Hopefully that um, gets a few eyeballs, maybe, uh, in, interested, right? Uh, that's what we're all about, is to bring in the body together. I uh, trust you all here are doing okay. You look, you look better than okay. The Netherlands. Very oh nice. God. I love just hearing all these countries and stuff where people are tuning in from. I know that last name. Uh, possibly local family here. That'd be awesome. And uh, the bond servant is here. Back in the house. For her. Uh, by the way, if you're on Facebook or YouTube or our app. Oh, we got to share it on the app. Remember, please, this is my um, obligatory appeal. Go get the app. It's 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 Christian run and it's just for us by us as it were. Um, there's no social media involved. Just make it your own. It's our stuff. So and you're not tracked. None of that stuff. Just go grab it. It's free at the App Store, Google Play Store, whatever device you have, phone or tablet, whatever. It works. It even works on your computer. Actually, once you sign up, you get into um, the web version as well. Or you can just share this channel you're watching on, or you can go get the Roku or Apple TV channel if you don't even, you know, you're not into phones and stuff. You just want to watch it on your TV. And stream that. Be my guest. Be our guest, please. And all the archives are there. It goes all the way back. Now we're approaching our, our anniversary, actually, um, putting our uh, membership class together. Uh, going all the way back, just like putting like the vision out there and what we, you know, what we're being led to to do right from the beginning and to see how it's just rolled on and on and on and increased and um, reached so many folks. It's just yeah. a, it's awesome. Five years next month, right? That's correct, sir. Yeah, that's pretty amazing, actually. I hesitate to go that far back to see uh, how much hair I had, but anyways. <laughs> sure a little grayer i don't know i am yeah it was a little darker whatever uh you're you're good you're good man you know you don't mess with the marines they always look good uh, i don't know uh so we do want to walk you here, here, no matter where you're watching or how how you're watching please say hello who you are where you're from if this is your first time or hundredth time doesn't matter we love you just the same uh so we want to get to know you we want to uh help you in the ministry that god has called you into we want to facilitate that you saw the the beginning of the broadcast uh, uh home church initiative pastor anderson has been all about that for quite a long time to be honest with you um but now we actually have the technology to do it just like with the you know through our site and the app and classes and all that stuff we had all these we thought the lord was putting all those ideas in there but we couldn't always implement them you know when you want to but now it's kind of here so go to homechurchinitiative.com. Uh, why don't you give us uh, the 10 second on that, Mr. Anderson, if you're, yeah. able, if you're able. Yeah, you know, if, if, you have, if you're called to home ministry, it doesn't matter what it is. Home church, just small fellowship where you have people get, gathering together, whatever it is. If you have people come to your house and fellowship, we want to connect with you. We want to connect you with other leaders from around the world where uh, you can fellowship with each other. You can ask each other questions. We're going to provide you resources, training. Basically, we want to be here to help cultivate your ministry. That's, that's pretty good. It's more like 20 seconds, but pretty good. We're pairing. The shortest I've done yet. Yeah, I'm saying that's uh, progress. It's progress. <laughs> it's, all, it's all that matters. Oh, man. Uh, so please do that. I mean, if you're led in any in any form or fashion, don't don't get thrown off by you know, word church or anything. It's just a gathering uh, outside of the church building. And many of us know that this is the way it has to be. And don't be intimidated by that. Just go ahead and do what the Lord's leading you to do. Um, anyway, so just we want to encourage you to do that. We're here to help you. We're here to help you as well. In any nation, by the way, in any nation, 
Uh, so please reach out and do that. Uh, we're going to get to worship time here in a second. And prayer, I do want to address uh, any prayers that come in. So please do that now. YouTube, Facebook, the app, etc. Go ahead and type it in, then we can pray f- for you and with you. Um, and I just want to say hello to Tracy again. She's wonderful, wonderful people in the Bachelor household. Love you guys. Uh, Key of David. By the way, we would love to interact. This is what mm-hmm. ministries would really, really like, and we have. Yep. Uh, Key of David says, remember... It's very important to be in full covenant with the Most High. That means keeping all his commandments. Remember the Sabbath, keep it holy, the fourth commandment, God bless. Well, we do want to bless you as well, brother. Uh, and we can definitely talk about that perhaps after um, the topic tonight. It's not going to be too awful long, so stick around if you want. I'd be happy to engage that because we certainly don't want to be disobedient. None of us think that at all. <laughs> at all. We do not want to mess with that. Uh, for sure. And hey, bless God, man, from California, Santa Cruz. Awesome. Awesome. So we've got all, both coasts represented. We've got different continents represented here. Netherlands. Uh, speaking hey, of, Kim. oh, I hey. totally short circuited that. Hey, Kim, bless you. Speaking of uh, home groups, our friends in Florida, which actually my family and I are headed to Florida in July. It's going to be a much needed vacation. Can't wait. What? So who knows? We're about to Kim out there. Who knows? Like Orlando, like the normal destinations? No, 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 no. Stay away from that. Around the Fort Lauderdale area. Also, I would say take me with you, but I, it's too hot for me. Same. And muggy. <laughs> can't, can't, can't do it. Dude, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it when I was 12. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> the winter, yeah. Sure. What's, winter. It's different. I mean, it, Afghanistan was hot. But it was a different, it was a dry heat than dry. To Florida. I would rather be in dry heat, be in the desert than yeah. Florida sometimes with that uh, humidity. For sure. For sure. I There's still no have ocean in the desert. I still have here. flashbacks of Epcot Center, 120 degrees and standing in line. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Anyways, if you can ha- take it, God bless you. The, we need sold, need saving in Florida. <laughs> yeah, it's good. No. it's good. We have tropical people to fill up the beaches because if we didn't, yeah. then every, it would be too crowded up here in the frozen north for any of us to handle it because we're all introverts. Mm. <laughs> probably not all of us. Probably not all of us. We might try anyway. to liberate some fish from the ocean. Who knows? It's beautiful there. It's gorgeous. I wish my blood thinned out faster in the heat. Anyway, so now you see, hopefully, folks, if you uh, haven't caught anti-church before, we'd love to just hang out and chat because we do. We do. And we want to do more of that. You know, God willing, if we can uh, make the time for it, we want, we'd just love to do that and hang out. Anyways, so <laughs> the app is part of that. Yeah, pull some from the fire. Pull some from the fire. That's right. L- literally burning alive in Florida. <laughs> oh, man. All right. right. Uh, praise Deer God. Beach. I have to check that out. Ain't no deer there. Probably. The deerless field beach. Anyways. All right. Well, uh, we love you all. Thank you so much for being here. Please take advantage of the app. Please take advantage of the prayer time that we have. We're coming to the last, I just want to mention, the end of our 21 Days for Israel. Um, It's ending Sunday. Sunday's the last day. Happens to be Pentecost. Happens to be... uh, a, a great messianic gathering is going to happen on the porch at the temple, the old where the temple used to stand out there in, uh, in the old city of Jerusalem itself, Temple Mount area. Um, that's happening this Sunday, um, and there's a Turkish election uh, on Sunday. Um, like all kinds of all kinds of things, all the kind of whatever's happening with Russia now and all this stuff. It's uh, and Iran and all this. So it's like God is definitely stirring up the pot. You know, he's, he's moving things around. We can all feel it. Uh, he's beginning to shake things. We know that's a promise from, from the Bible, right, to shake everything. And Pastor Anderson's even preached on it before. Um, all kinds. Hey, Mary. Yeah, I don't know what's the problem with YouTube uh, pictures. Some people aren't showing up in their pictures. I don't know. Um, anyways, yeah, so we can all feel it. I think we all can appreciate something's going on. So to be in prayer and to be intentionally, you know, whether it be fasting, whether, you know, or giving up something else in your life or, 
We're recommitting to just prayer on a daily basis, on a multi time per day basis, you know, get a little reminder on your, I mean, they have apps for that. I mean, like there's ways, there's no really excuse at all anymore. Right. Just beep off time to pray, beep, time, you know, pray for Israel. Boom. Um, whatever that is, however that works for you, um, please make an effort this week. I think, um, you know, you know, it's worth it. It's always worthwhile. Um, but I think God would really, um, do something, do something with that anyway. So I encourage you to join us in that. It ends Sunday. I'm personally praying for the 144,000 to, to arise. Uh, that's my, it's on my heart. That's what I think God desires. Again, if it's in the book, we got to pray for it. That's what I figure. Can't go wrong. Cause it's gonna, you're going to get answered. Um, but to, just to be a part of that, just to be part of that. Um, it's really, really cool. Uh, anyways, please check out all the things we've got. We've got merch on it, like shirts and hats and even music by our own uh conductor or a performer extraordinaire whatever writer director everything um fantastic way to read the scriptures book of revelation specifically but it'll work for any anything you're reading um it's really awesome so anyway support the church serve us serve us serve serve period uh we all are servants that's what we do that's what we're supposed to be about serve the church that's what i mean excuse me that's we do it to each other. We're the we're the body of Christ. That's what we do. Okay, uh, artist. There you go, bond servant. She's an artist, indeed. Well, it takes one to know one. She a um, artist. Bond servant is an artist. She is doing all of the cool stuff. Crazy here. stuff. If you want to see what we're talking about, go get the app. The app. Very cool, uh, Jacob's Refuge deal there that she yeah. made. No, I, yeah, she made no some doubt. Money. Bond servant made some. Cool stuff. For sure. All right. Let's um let's let's worship God. How about that? Uh let's we've got a, a number that Taryn wrote. Uh it's called wait, I got it right here. It's called Israel My People Forever. Israel My People Forever. Super awesome. If you all were here last week, hopefully we got a little rundown of uh what God thinks, uh the promises that he's made. Why it still matters, why it matters to you as a Christian, a Gentile, um, and what's coming because of them. Anyways, just a really cool thing to pray about and meditate on. It is. Um, yeah, it is, right? Do you have an in- introduction to this, Taryn, how this came about? Or just like, all yeah, right, God, do this. Just praying briefly, sitting down, it's a spontaneous free play. So it's not, ri- it's not something I wrote in the sense that I mapped it out first. It's just off the cuff. Um, I'm getting into spontaneous worship, so that's kind of what this is, and just pray for Israel, as we all have been doing, and God bless all of you. Amen. All right, let's do that now, and then we'll come back and pray. Thank you. 
Amen. Thank you, Taryn, for the worship tonight. I just want to go ahead and get into a moment of prayer. I haven't really seen any prayer requests necessarily come through on YouTube or Facebook tonight. So we're going to go straight to the app. Again, one of the advantages of having the End Time Church app uh, is that you have access to this prayer page where people can pray for your needs at any time. If you go to the link at the bottom of the screen, endtime.app, you can find it right there. It's uh, free in most every app store. So let's just go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. And while we're praying, if you do have a prayer request, go ahead and submit it. So, Father, we come boldly before the throne of grace today, God, with prayer and petition and thanksgiving in our hearts, God. We just want to thank you, Lord, for who you are and what you're doing uh, in our lives, what you're doing here at End Time Church. Well, God, we, we just want to bless you, God, for you are worthy of all praise, God. You are worthy of all worship and all adoration, God. We extol you tonight. We bless you. We lift your name up, God. We pray that this worship time, God, was a sweet incense unto you, that it was a blessing to you, Father. For God, that's all that really matters. Lord, I just want to bring to you, God, tonight the prayer requests that are coming in uh, here on the app. Lord, I just want to lift up Laura right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, you know, Laura had the mild stroke on her left side. Um, you know, blood pressure got high. Uh, Father, I just uh, thank you, God, for preserving her through that. God, I just ask that you begin to restore and, and heal, God, every bit of damage that might have been caused by the stroke. Uh, anything that might be uh, causing the high blood pressure, Lord, we just ask, God, that you just begin to move in that. Uh, Father, I thank you, God, that, uh, you know, she's still with us and able to worship with us. I uh, thank you, God, that you brought her through that. I just pray, God, that you would continue to be with her and continue to guide her, continue to continue to strengthen her, uh, not only uh, her body, but also her spirit uh, and also her mind, Lord. I just pray that you would continue to bring strength uh, to her life. Uh, Lord, I just want to lift up Josiah right now, God, uh, Josiah. You know, the struggles he's dealing with at work, God, with uh, with individuals, uh, even the spiritual battle that's taking place there as uh, people are being influenced uh, and, and taking it out. And essentially uh, on Josiah, God, uh, the spiritual battle that's happening there, God, I just come against every wicked spirit, every unclean spirit uh, in that place that's coming against Josiah. But I just ask God that you would give him strength, give him courage, uh, strengthen his backbone. God, make him bold, make him bold like a lion. For you, Lord. Uh, God, I just pray that you would infill him in his mind and in his heart with words to say uh, when these people come at him the way they do, uh, Lord, and that it would silence them and it would put them, uh, basically put them in their place, Lord, that it would stop the mouth of the accuser, Lord. Lord, I just want to lift up uh, tonight. Just can you lift up Phil and Janine Lie, Lord? I just ask God that you would continue to move in their situation, God. I ask that you would continue to give them strength. Continue to speak to them. Continue to minister to them, God. I just ask that you would continue to move and open doors that no man can close and close doors that no man can open, Father. I ask, God, that, uh, Lord, this time, this this season they've been in for so long, it seems, the struggles they've they've endured, faithfully endured uh, for so long, God. I just ask, God, that, uh, Lord, in your time that you'd bring it to a conclusion, God. Uh, Lord, I just ask that you would continue to, to strengthen both Phil and Janine and continue to make them a witness and a light, uh, Lord, in Australia. Just pray, God, that people would have their faith encouraged continually by the example Phil and Janine are setting, Lord, and that people will come to faith as a result of, you know, what they were enduring, uh, faithfully enduring for you. Thank you for that, Lord. Um. Lord, it's any un unspoken prayer request tonight that uh, might be coming in, Lord, and people maybe not want to post yet. God, you know what those things are, Lord. I just ask that you would begin to move in those situations, whatever they may be, whether it's a physical ailment or a pain in, in a person's body, whether it's a mental struggle or a disability or anything of that nature that people are dealing with, uh, whether it's feelings of uh, rejection, God, whether it's people not being secure in their faith, Lord. Whatever it may be, God, I just ask you to begin to move in those situations, Lord. Father, we just lift up in this 21-day uh, prayer for Israel, God, leading into Pentecost, Lord. We just continue to lift up the people of Israel, God, the Jewish people and the nation itself, God. We just ask, Lord, that they would come to faith in you, Lord, that there would be a mighty revival that would sweep through the nation of Israel, God, that people would come to faith 
Uh, Lord, we know that there is a persecution in Israel against Christians, uh, legislation even uh, against Messianic Christians and, and those who believe in you, Jesus. But we know, God, that where persecution arises, God, that a mighty revival generally always follows. You know, the persecution of Rome led to the explosion, explosive growth of Christianity uh, in the West and the East, Lord. And so I just ask the same thing would happen uh, right here, Lord, uh, in Israel, that an explosive growth of faith would take place in the lives of people there, uh, that, that untold thousands and thousands and thousands and millions would come to faith in you, Jesus. Uh, God, I ask that as this uh, Pentecost comes, Lord, or this incredible season of recognizing not only the giving of Torah, but more importantly, the giving of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, we ask God that you would pour out your spirit as you did in that first Pentecost so long ago uh, when the church was born, that you would pour out your spirit in the same way, God, and that Jerusalem would be filled with people on fire for you, Jesus, and that thousands would come to faith. And Lord, we just ask and pray uh, tonight, God, for Pastor Manti, that you would fill his mouth with your words, that he would speak what you want spoken, nothing more, nothing less. Lord, I ask that you would use him as a vessel tonight. Use him, God. Uh, to lead somebody to Christ, lead somebody to you, Jesus. That's something that he says tonight would stir conviction in someone's life. Maybe it's someone who fancies themselves a Christian now, but truly deep down they know that they're not. May God, his words, stir them to repentance, to genuine conversion, to genuine repentance, and to genuine discipleship. Maybe it's somebody that's never known you before, Lord, that has never accepted you as, as Lord and Savior, that has never placed their faith in you. And has never repented, God. May they come to repentance tonight. May they come to faith, saving faith in you tonight, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your grace. That unmerited favor, God. That's nothing we can do to earn it. But you give it to us. I thank you, God, for, for your grace. And I thank you for your new mercies every morning. Lord, we praise you, God, and we lift you up. You're worthy of all of our praise. May each and every day draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, brother. I agree with my brother's prayer, Father. All of them. I praise you, Holy Spirit, for being here in us, in your people, to tell us the will of the Father. To reveal the word of God. To tell us things to come. I agree with my sister's prayer and worship to you. Amen. Amen, amen. The Ruach HaKodesh, indeed, Holy Spirit. We are definitely going to hit on uh, what Pastor Anderson just prayed about, which was the, is the great unmerited grace of our God, Jesus, the Messiah. And um, circling back to the original question that Brother asked um, at the top of the hour. So let's get to it, shall we? End time prepping. This is going to be a several, um, I don't want to call it a series per se. I guess it is. Um, by the way, this, the QR code that you see there, I'm going to take that away now. But if you're watching on TV like the Roku or Apple TV channel, um, so go ahead and scan that. You get the app. Or if you're watching any other way and you want the app, it's just a scan and boom, it'll bring you right to the app store just, just like that. Okay, so this is going to be a series of messages. I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know how many there's going to be, uh, but I feel like the body is, even those who are kind of out of tune, uh, normally uh, hear these words, hear the word prepper or prepping, and uh, we have a kind of funny, you know, um, understanding of that <clears throat> in, uh, in America. Um, but it still stirs something in many of us. 
that there's there's a truth there. But Lord, help us see what you're actually saying and not our assumptions about what being a prepper in the end time means. All right. So let's first off, before we get to the um, specific message tonight, I do want to open with what it means to be a prepper, doing it right, prepping right. Okay. So uh, it turns out that um, I did an interview back now, 2020, way three years ago um, with a, a, Digital magazine, it's actually out in, uh, I want to say, the, I believe it's the Philippines, called One Voice Magazine, and they interviewed me about my book and stuff. But anyway, it was titled, the article when it came out, Why Should Israel Matter to Me? Uh, and there is the link if you all want to go read it in full. It's very interesting, if I do say so. They asked really good questions. Um. But basically, in in terms of what we're talking about here tonight, I was asked, how should Christians prepare for the end times? Point blank. I gave a two-pronged answer. Number one, you need to prepare spiritually. Christians need to prepare spiritually. Prepare to face immense suffering so that you will never deny Jesus. Second, what does it mean to prepare as a Christian? Prepare scripturally. We need to prepare scripturally. Prepare to stay on mission based on what the Bible does say, not what it doesn't say. And just to break down those two things a little bit more, just so we don't get confused, we don't get it twisted, we're not talking about doomsday preppers on the history channel or whatever that was on uh maybe your you know the hollywood version or maybe your romanticized version of some kind of basement and you know food for seven years or something preparing spiritually means make your spiritual preparations number one first and foremost prepare yourself in a way that you will never deny christ never deny jesus no matter what that's what really matters that's ultimately that's the only thing that truly matters to prepare for everything else is temporary. We're not supposed to think or worry, right? Think about worry about what we're going to wear or eat. That's a command. If it comes down to Jesus or your food for the day, it should be an easy answer. But the pressure during this final time that we call the great tribulation, Jesus called the great tribulation, the last three and a half years, the pressure then is going to be so profound, especially in the areas around Israel, the, around the topic of Israel, around the people, the Jews, and the place, the actual location around it will be very important. And it'll be a profound pressure there. It's going to be incredibly difficult to be a Christian in the last days if we're faithful. So you must decide beforehand that you're going to stand, that you're going to stay with Jesus no matter what. You will never deny him no matter what happens to you or to your family. A lot of us say, oh, well, you know, I, it's no problem with me. I can, I can take it. Now, I'll never deny the Lord. Well, what about if your wife or your children or your husband or your parents or whatever now are suffering because of your stand? Uh, what if they're threatened because of your faith? How about medicine, food, shelter? Would you pre- are you prepared to lose those things, go without in order to not deny Jesus? Prepare to lose comfort. Prepare spiritually to never deny the Lord. Grow in intimacy with him. This is what prayer is really good at, is cultivating that that intimacy with the Father. No matter how bad it gets, suffering will always be temporary. We know that because Paul says that, 2 Corinthians 4.17. You're never going to regret being faithful to the Lord, ever. And number two, prepping scripturally. Be scriptural in your preparations. For example, Bible provides details of what is coming and what our responsibilities as believers will be. And as I previously discussed, this is from the article, one of our responsibilities is to provide a place for those fleeing 
to the mountains of Israel or from Israel, Revelation 12, 6, etc. We have very specific information in the Bible, so we must stick with what the Scripture does say. Don't rely on what it doesn't say. <laughs> Seems silly to even write that, but that's what we do all the time. Many in the church just go on their assumptions or maybes or I feel this or I think that or I sense this. Look, if it's not in the Scripture, don't think about it. Don't rely on it. You can't count on it. Stand on what the Scripture does say. Now, you're specifically warned by the Lord many times to watch, right? To don't be deceived, right? Watch out. No one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah will deceive many, Matthew 24. On Judgment Day, Jesus will ask when he comes and he will separate the sheep and the goats. And he says, what did you do to me, to my people, right? He, he, he makes it about him based on what you did to his people, the least of these my brothers. When they were in need, when they needed food, clothing, shelter, what did you do? So when the end comes, I'd rather be sure that Jesus will tell me, well done, good and faithful servant. You did exactly what I told you to do. You followed exactly what I wrote. In the Bible, you paid attention. Dig into the Word. Stay on mission. Stay on point. Stay scriptural. You cannot go wrong because the Holy Spirit will help you. He will reveal those details if you're lacking. He is going to make sure that you are equipped. John 16, 13. All right, so that's when I say prepping, when you want to be an end times prepper, those are the main uh, guardrails. We want to be on at all times, all times. Make sure it's scriptural and spiritual. Don't make it about your body. Don't make it about food and drink. Don't make it about surviving. Don't make it about your flesh. The flesh profits nothing. Okay, so this is going to be the first in our series called In Wrath, Remember Mercy. Uh, we're going to look at three different passages here. The first in Habakkuk chapter 3, uh, specifically focus on verse 2. And I pr um, put in there in three different translations or versions, uh, Habakkuk 3.2. And I highlighted the similar part in each. In wrath, remember mercy, New King James, which is where the title tonight comes from. Or in the NET, it says, when you cause turmoil, remember to show us mercy. Or the New Living says, and in your anger, remember your mercy. So don't, as long as we're, so we understand clearly what the meaning of that sentence is, that in the wrath of his anger, his turmoil that he causes to remember. So what I'm going to do is read, uh, that entire passage, and then we can just focus on focus on that bit for sure. And uh, obviously, let me know your thoughts if if something occurs to you in the uh, in the chat tonight. That's no problem. By the way, if you're not watching tonight, that's great too. You definitely can feel free to comment and send us email. You see my email there below. Um. Anyway, just feel free to do that. Habakkuk chapter 3. Lord, I have heard, this is the uh, NET, Jehovah, I have heard the report of what you did. I am in awe, Lord, by what you have accomplished. He's talking about in here. When he says, I've heard of what you've did, you know, what you've done, and the awesome things that you've accomplished, it's all about the scripture, the Tanakh, the, the written word the history of the Jews, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, the Red Sea, out of Egypt, that's the biggie. Right? We, there are other things, obviously, but the, the prophets, the biblical prophets, keep going back to that as the biggest thing that basically has ever occurred to Israel, for sure, and basically to the world in terms of God's specific relationship to a group of people. He's never shown out like that, except for, you know, the Red Sea and Moses and all that. Okay. By what you have accomplished. Now he's asking Habakkuk, he says, 
in our time, repeat those deeds in our time, reveal them again. Um, that what it literally says there, and some Bibles go along with it, it says in the midst of the years, in the midst of our years or the years, it's kind of confusing, honestly. Um, I don't really prefer that. Uh, like, what does it mean? Like, how, make me understand. What is that in the midst of the years? Well, he said, if he's saying in the midst of my years, that means do it now, right? In our time, repeat those deeds, reveal them again. He's talking about really specifically the Red Sea and fleeing through to Mount Sinai. And that's going to be a theme here. Uh, reveal them again. But when you cause turmoil, as you see here, this translation, when you cause turmoil, remember to show us mercy. God comes from Timan, the Holy One from Mount Paran. Where are these places? Um, Saudi Arabia, Edom. Why would he come there? His splendor has covered the skies. The earth is full of his glory. His brightness will be as lightning. A two-pronged lightning bolt flashes from his hand. That's kind of a different... Oh, I forgot the sila. Sorry. Rewind. There's a selah in here, like in the Psalms. Like many of the Psalms say selah, pause, ref, you know, meditate, reflect, however you want to understand that. Um, it says, God comes from Timan, the Holy One from Mount Paran, selah. So pause on that. Reflect on that. Again... You know, like, I guess, like I just asked, why? Why there? Why is that important? Well, again, we're thinking about the Exodus. We're thinking about when the leaving of Egypt crossing the Red Sea, and this is where they ended up in Midian and Edom in this land of northwest Saudi Arabia today and south, um, southwest Jordan. Northwest Saudi Arabia, excuse me, southwest Jordan. Uh, when it says his splendor covers the skies, the earth is full of his glory. His brightness will be as lightning. That's the day of the Lord, period. That's just the day of the Lord. We know that's Malachi chapter 4, Isaiah 66, um, obviously Revelation 1, uh, Zechariah. I mean, you. there's so much on this. We know that when he comes, he splits the sky. Revelation 6, etc. right? This is him doing that. He's going to come. Because this didn't happen in the Exodus, as you're going to see, too. Uh, wh when it says a two-pronged lightning bolt, some of the other versions say, um, uh, what does it say? I forget. Probably just like rays. That's what it is, rays. Or lightning bolts. Okay, well, the actual word there is two horns from his hand. <laughs> two horns. So anyway, study study up on that. Uh, Two-pronged lightning bolt flashes from his hand. So he's got lightning from his hands. Like that old song, our God is an awesome God, right? Just fire and lightning in his fist. Yep. This is what the this is the outward display of his power. So this is what the world is going to see. That. Plague goes before him. Pestilence will march right behind him. The plague will go before him. Pestilence will march right behind him. That didn't happen in the Exodus. <laughs> he took his battle position and shook the earth. Again, we we let off with this tonight. He's going to he's will shake everything that can be shaken. That's the other prophets have said that. I mean, biblical prophets. We know that's coming. Um, he took his battle position and shook the earth with a mere look. He frightened the nations. That uh, makes me think of the sixth seal. Uh, where this where the skies are rolled back and they the leaders of the earth hid themselves in the caves of the rock just looking at the the lamb the wrath of the lamb that's coming the wrath of god uh the ancient mountains disintegrated the primeval hills were flattened his his are ancient roads indeed the ancient ways the old ways right like the proverbs 
I saw the tents of Kushan overwhelmed by trouble. The tent curtains of the land of Midian were shaking. We know where Midian is. Again, that's Saudi Arabia. That's across the Red Sea. Um, and what about Kushan? I, th- I used to, I made a mistake previously, like reading this. I thought it was like Kush because it's the same root um, word. Kush is a, n- a nation in Africa. Um, but Kushan is actually in Jordan today. This uh, this Bible is really cool. It's called the NET Full Notes version. It has some really cool um, insights, um, like that one. Kushan located in southern Trans Jordan. There you go. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, so we got southern Trans Trans Jordan. Just means the other side of the Jordan. In other words, not the Israel side, the other side of the Jordan River. That's the nation of Jordan. That's why it's called Jordan, by the way. Duh. Pastor, they knew that. Um, Primeval hills are flattened. These are the ancient roads, right? Midian, What was the Lord mad at the rivers? Were you angry with the rivers? Were you enraged at the sea? Such that you would climb into your horse-drawn chariots, your victorious chariots? He's talking about the sea, like the Red Sea. Right? Are you mad at them? But wait a minute. This is Exodus part two. <laughs> uh, this is the return of the Lord. It's going to be maybe the same but different. When what, what scriptures do we have where there's a raging sea and the, the winds are whipping up the sea? Daniel chapter 7 and Revelation chapter 7. And Revelation 7 is when that those winds are blowing, the 144,000 emerge. That's what we're praying for even tonight. Um, now we all want, I want hundreds of thousands and millions of Jews to be saved. Of course, but you can't really make a scriptural case that that's going to happen before the final, final, final end of the process when all Israel is saved. But before that, we've got a promise of 144,000. So, and we're not close to that yet. So let's pray into that. Um, so anyway, that's a sea that's stirred up. Okay. Verse eight, we're on here such that you would climb over into your horse drawn chariots, your victorious chariots, Zechariah six, there's four chariots. Uh, again, that correspond very well with the first four seals. We've taught that in other times, but anyways, it just reminds me of that when I see that language and just not a coincidence. I don't, I don't think it can be a coincidence. Your bow is ready for action. Your commission, your you commission your arrows, Selah. There it is again. Pause and meditate on that. You cause flash floods the earth's surface. When the mountains see you, they shake. Torrential downpour sweeps through. The great deep shouts out. It lifts its heads, hands high. The sun and the moon stand still in their courses. <laughs> That's end time stuff. Right? See the sign. You'll see the Luke 21, right? See the signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. And all that. Again, Revelation 6. Um, sign of the day of the Lord. Joel chapter 2. On and on. The flash of your arrows. There's the arrows that we're told to meditate about. Meditate about. Um, the flash of your arrows. Where did you go? Drives them away. The sun and the moon, I guess. The bright light of your lightning quick spear. Isn't that Jesus is coming as the light, the shining, um, the morning star? Um, every eye will see him. The bright light of your lightning quick spear, you're, you furiously stomp on the earth. You angrily trample down the nations. Uh, again, that's Zechariah. That's Revelation 19. That's, you know, trampling the wine press of the wrath of God. You march out to deliver your people, to deliver your special servant. Um, that word there is anointed one. Hmm. Um, anoint, uh, Christos or, or Mashiach. Okay. Uh, it, does it mean Jesus, the Messiah, or does it mean his people? The ones that are left, those 
who who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. You deliver your special servant, your anointed ones, perhaps. Just possibly, possibility. You strike the leader of the wicked nation, laying him open from lower body to neck. Okay, well, the leader of the wicked nation clearly is the Antichrist. And at, that's what the scene is when the Lord returns, correct? Um, and this is a very diplomatic way of translating. It's far more gory and adult. Um, let's just say it's, he's really dead. Uh, you pierce the heads of his warriors with a spear. His warriors, meaning the armies of the Antichrist. We know that's what happens when Jesus comes back. They storm forward to scatter us, us, the, the Jews, Israel, they shout with joy as if they were plundering the poor with no opposition. So that's how they, when they invade, this is their attitude. Like, this is going to be easy because God allows it. That's why it's going to seem easy. But then he stops allowing it. But you trample on the sea with your horses. So we had chariots in verse 8, and that's Zechariah language. And now we have horses, that's Revelation 6 language. On the surging, raging waters. There's the raging waters, again, like Daniel and Revelation. Okay. So that's the Habakkuk um, passage I wanted to cover. But again, the the focus should be on verse 2. In your wrath, in your turmoil, in your anger, when it comes, remember mercy. Show us mercy. Remember your mercy, Lord. All right, next, that ties directly into this, uh, is Daniel chapter 9, specifically verse 16, where we see again several translations there. I pray let your anger and your fury be turned away from your city, Jerusalem. Your anger away from your city. Turn your furious anger away from your city. So we just say, in your anger, remember mercy this is that time there's a time of um chastisement anger wrath um things that are allowed to happen to jerusalem and that's important to remember that it's not about you as a gentile christian it's not about your country there's no sign in the bible about america or europe or whatever going to hell or falling, or whatever, or persecution even in your country. That's not in the Bible. This is. So that's like the second rail, like I was leading off with, right? You've got to be biblical. It's got to be scriptural, your preparations. You're prepping. Um, I do see some comments going on there. I'm not ignoring you. Um, I think it's probably better to just circle back at the end if y'all don't mind. Okay, so let's go now to Daniel chapter 9 and read this portion. We should, we're very, if you're a prophecy student, you should be very familiar um, with obviously the end of this chapter because it's a famous, you know, the famous 70 weeks, the 70 weeks prophecy um, that proves directly God wrote the the Bible God wrote God spoke to Daniel um it's so it's so detailed and specific it nails down the year of Jesus first coming all right but then there's something that happens after that one more week um or he is crucified which is what we're still waiting to fulfill. But anyways, that's the end of this chapter. The first part of Daniel 9 and the majority of it, if you don't have never read it, you hopefully you do all the time, but uh, the first part of it's a prayer, a, a impassioned, um, heart-wrenching, gut-wrenching prayer from Daniel to God for his people, the Jews, for his city, Jerusalem, God's city, and Daniel's and the temple, and the mount that it's on. So it's super specific prayers, um, but he is so broken up about it. And again, you know, like we did, we went through Daniel. Um, when was that? 2021? 
I guess uh, it was very plain. Like God didn't have a problem with Daniel. He didn't have to do this. Like he didn't say, go pray. Like you got to repent for your, for your deeds or something, but he did it for his people. This is what I want you to catch. Okay. It's not about us. If we're repenting for someone else, Mm, that's not the right words. Uh, For the sin of Israel is the problem is the issue is the issue for daniel and it's still what's animating the world let's pick it up uh let's go verse 11 all is through 19 right yeah all israel has broken your law and turned away by not obeying you uh look Nobody, all means all, and that's all all means. All right, wait, I'm sorry. I got it. I'm sorry. God help me. I want to be gracious to this brother, Michael Knight. Jesus, this is an ignorant comment, and is really has no place in a Christian conversation because it's so of the enemy. Jesus was a Jew, is a Jew, and it will be one when he returns to save the Jews. So stop with this. Okay? It's ridiculous. You're, I had to put you in timeout. Or even block it. Who knows? Anyways, hopefully no one else is thinking along those lines. Okay? Um, all Israel has broken your law and turned away by not obeying you. No Jew ever kept the law. No rabbi, don't believe anyone today, or don't believe any Christian can keep the law. Because if Israel couldn't do it, and that's all what these priests and, and Levites and, and rabbis were about all day, every day, even if you want to look at the Orthodox community in Israel today, that's what they're all about. They literally won't work. They won't serve in the military. They won't do anything except, like, study the Torah, like, they can't keep it. No one has ever kept it. That's important. The Old Testament says that. Daniel said that. So this is post-Babylon, where like Nebuchadnezzar already destroyed the first temple. That's what the context of Daniel's prayer is. They've already been punished. From Moses all the way to all the way to Nebuchadnezzar, no, no one has kept it. All Israel's broken your law and turned away by not obeying you. Therefore, you have poured out on us the judgment solemnly threatened in the law of Moses, the servant of God, for we have sinned against you. He has carried out his threats against us and our rulers who were over us by bringing great calamity on us. What has happened to Jerusalem has never been equaled under all heaven. Now, hang on. Wait a second. In a couple of chapters, the angel Gabriel is about to tell him, and Jesus would repeat it when talking about the days before he comes, is that the Jacob's trouble, the time of trouble, the time of great tribulation, the final three and a half years, will be the greatest since there's been a nation and will never be again. So, what happened under King Nebuchadnezzar is instructive because it's a foreign army from the north, comes in, obviously Gentiles, God allows it, that's the key, because of the sin of Israel, that's the key, uh, he w- invaded Jerusalem, that's the key, he waited until the Egyptians wouldn't stop him, that's the key, um, or he was on the team, okay, he invaded Jerusalem, he he ransacked the temple. He destroyed the temple. Okay, like all these things are a template for what we should be looking for again. And our our posture, our attitude towards this situation is everything. Because God's going to do what he's going to do. But he's called us as the Gentile Christians, and yes, as the Jewish, the Messianic believers, obviously, um, but we have, we've been called into this story, into this drama, and our posture and our 
reactions and our um, acts matter in infinitely right you have matthew mark luke john and not the faith of the apostles the book is called the acts what has been happening to jerusalem has never been equaled under all heaven but yet Daniel 12, 1, he says there will be a worse one. Just as it is written in the law of Moses, so all this calamity has come on us. Still, we have not tried to pacify the Lord our God by turning, uh, turning back from our sin and seeking wisdom from your reliable moral standards or your truth. Your truth. Thy word is truth. This is the truth. And Jesus, the truth is a man, let's be honest. He is the one who wrote the book and called out Israel as his son, it says. Um, we have not tried to pacify the Lord our God from turning from our sin and seeking wisdom from your reliable moral standards, the truth. The Lord was mindful of the calamity and he brought it on us. For the Lord our God is just in all he has done, and we have not obeyed him. Now, O Lord our God, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with great power. Here it is again, just like with Habakkuk. We're talking about the uh, exodus and the deliverance from Egypt and the Red Sea incident miracle. You brought your people out of the land of Egypt with great power, made a name for yourself that is remembered to this day. We have sinned and behaved wickedly. O Lord, according to all your justice, please turn your raging anger away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain. For due to our sins and the iniquities of our ancestors, Jerusalem and your people are mocked by all our neighbors. So now, God, accept the prayer and requests of your servant and show favor to your devastated sanctuary for your own sake. The sanctuary is the temple. The Holy of Holies has been desecrated, desolated, Listen attentively, my God, and hear, open your eyes and look on our desolated ruins and the city called by your name. For it is not, listen, friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, listen. For it is not because of our own righteousness, our own righteous deeds that we are praying to you, but because of your compassion is abundant. It is not because of of our righteous deeds that we are praying to you, but because your compassion or mercy is abundant. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, pay attention and act. Don't delay for your own sake, O oh my God, for your city and your people are called by your name. Um. And let it be known, as we just read there, this, when you hear the phrase, people called by your name, if my people who are called by my name, you all know that one, right? That's popular nowadays. That's not for Gentiles. And that's not anywhere but Jerusalem. Sorry. One more um, scripture here that we've got to concentrate on. Luke chapter 18, focus, uh, we're going to go 6 to 14, we're going to focus on verse 13, where it says, in again, three different versions, God be merciful to me, a sinner, be merciful to me, the sinner I am, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. So what is that about? In wrath, remember your mercy. Some of you know which um, 
parable this is. This is the uh, and e the NLT I'll be doing this one on. So let's do it. Luke chapter eighteen. I'm going to go up to verse six. Um, and start it. The Lord said, "Learn a lesson from this unjust judge, for he rendered a just decision in the end." So you don't think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? That sounds a lot like Daniel's prayer. I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns... How many will he find on the earth who have faith? That's where we come in. We're expected to have faith and believe and obey. Jesus told this story to some who had, listen, all of us are susceptible to this, friends. This is nothing new under the sun. He told this story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness and scorned everyone else. What did Daniel just say? This is not because of our righteous deeds, but because of your mercy. Don't look. I know this is to the Pharisees, but as a Christian, this applies to us. Do not be found by God to have the pride in your soul to say that I am righteous and my righteous acts, my righteousness, I, it allows me to scorn anyone else, treat them with contempt, or to say I'm above them. Here's the parable, verse 10. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not like these other people, cheaters, sinners, adulterers. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. I fast twice a week. And I give a tenth of my income. I give you a tenth of my income. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, Oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. I tell you, this sinner and not the Pharisee returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Not the Pharisee. He didn't go home justified. He went to the temple. He did what he was supposed to do. He prayed the right way. He tithed his 10%. He fasts twice a week. He's not like these other sinners. He doesn't commit adultery. He doesn't cheat. He's certainly not a tax collector. Does any of that, he kept the law. Does any of that justify him before God? No, it does not. He's disqualified himself because, and but this is just a parable. It doesn't say it actually happened, right? He's this is for us. Do not you want to disqualify yourself? Then act like that. Think you're better. Think you're anything other than a sinner. 
who sorrowfully needs to come to God, repentant, beating your chest, and remorse, and ask for mercy, beg for mercy. No, no, that the mercy of God is the only possible chance you have. Because if you go any other measure, you're going to, to lose. You're going to be condemned by the righteous judge. He is right. Just like Daniel said, you are right to bring this on, Israel. You are right to do it. We didn't listen to you. We didn't obey. We didn't keep the promise. We didn't keep our end of the bargain of the Mosaic Covenant. So you put in, well, consequences, and you did it. And he's going to do it again. So what is your reaction? What is your posture going to be in that? Even now, do you think you're better than the Jews? Do you think you're better than other Christians? Well, we got a commenter right tonight who thinks he is. For example, I'm not trying to judge anyone. I'm just, the fruit is there, okay? If you buy your fruit, their fruit, you'll know them. Um, don't be known. Don't let your fruit be pride. Or to say you're you you keep all this and you keep that and you're you do all the right things and you can't I'm way better than these guys who don't. You you are not justified by that. Mercy of God, the mercy of God, that's it. That's why Paul said, "Grace, grace, all is of grace." That doesn't mean you get away with uh, never actually repenting and coming to not, you know, coming to right standing with God. I'm just. Saying there's no other way. So I just wanted to close out with, because um, it's better than what I could say, which is what God has already said on this in James chapter 5. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. You want to be a prepper? You want to be a prepper for the end times? You want to remember mercy for real? Be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rains in the fall and in the spring. In other words, the early and latter rains. They eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. Then you too must be patient. Take courage. For the coming of the Lord is near. We believe he is near. There are signs, yes, and it's not tomorrow, but we do think he's near. We believe it. Take courage from that. Don't grumble about each other, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door. For examples of patience and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, just look at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We give great honor to those who endure suffering, don't we? For instance, you know about Job, a man of great endurance. Look to him. Look to the prophets. Patience in suffering. you can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end. For the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. And in his wrath, he will remember mercy. He will be kind at the end to those who seek him and call on his name. And say, I'm a sinner. I need the mercy of God. And when he does return, that is the end. <laughs> and he will be kind. Yes, even to the Jews who rejected him up to that point. The mercy of God does not know boundaries to a repentant heart. So, but that's the day. Got to get right. Get ready, yes, prepare. Prepare scripturally, prepare spiritually. 
And that's how we do it. All right, so point one in end time prepping in wrath. Remember mercy, amen. Amen. Okay. Um, let's see what we've got going on for questions. I said I would go back to here, Key of David. Sorry, drink here. Ah, pardon me. Remember, it's very important to be in full covenant. That means keeping all his commandments. Well, we kind of touched on this, I think, David, whether that's your name or not. Uh, if it's not, please tell us your real name. Um, it, it, look, Paul has talked about this. New Testament talks about this. Don't let anyone judge you in food or drink or days of the week. That's not saying it's bad, but no one's going to keep the commandments. That's not the important part. The repentance and the blood of the lamb is an important part. Having uh, the word of the testimony in you, that's the important part. That's how we overcome. Um, That's what we're judged on our faithfulness, on whether we treated his people like we treat him, as if it were Jesus himself. Clothing, food, shelter, especially to the Jewish people in that final period. What are you going to do about it? That's what he's looking at. He's not looking at whether you had a Sabbath this Saturday. As a Gentile, it's irrelevant to you. I mean, do it if you want, but it's not a thing. It's not a commandment. Um, pray for our sister brothers in the persecution. Oh, well, that was our prayer time. Sorry. Um... T-Rex says, it's kind of funny. We have a word in English language called preparing, yet somehow we prefer prepping. It's really, you don't save any syllables or, you know, hardly anything there. Yeah, to prep, to prep. We can't say prepare, it's prep. Uh, to be a prepper. I told you I got a phone call one time out of the blue. This is several years ago now. It was from one of these shows. It was... Uh, I don't know how the producer got my personal cell phone, but anyways, um, I was called and said, yeah, we're doing this show called Doomsday Preppers and or something. And, uh, you know, we want to interview about it. You know, how do you, what kind of prepping are you doing? And I kind of just said, oh, well, probably not like the other people you're talking to. I'm spiritually preparing. Uh, and she's like, oh, you know, and then, okay, we'll get back to you and never, never got back. They're not, they're not the world is not interested in spiritual preparation they're all they're all about making fun of people with bunkers and and um you know stores of food and ammo and whatever i'm just not going to entertain that mary don says Uh, Israel should matter, even if it's not the center of the eschatol- of eschatological importance, which it is. But your point is, it shouldn't even matter. They've been under siege for decades. Their enemies want to wipe them out. And it's, so it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been, you know, it used to be Hitler, and and they tried that, and now it's, you know, Islam is very, making a big stink. Um, and the truth is, it is escalating, even during the worst Nazi times. Um, there was never the brazen... Jew hatred that there is now and widespread as it is now was not even it's never happened at all like you're seeing today so yes definitely the enemies have always been against them you saw it in 1948 as soon as they declared a state they're immediately attacked right that whole thing no doubt about it you're totally right but even at that it's getting worse Ah, uh, Gene. Hey, Gene. Haven't seen you in a while, my friend. Bless the Lord for you. Timan is the name of a district and town, the land of Edom, named after Timan, grandson of Esau, son of his firstborn. That's right. So we've got Genesis uh, telling us where that is. So Edom, we know, and I put a picture in Fleet of the Mountains, exactly where Edom um, 
is and how it expanded um, by the time Ezekiel wrote those prophecies about Edom. So about the um, from Genesis all the way through to the prophets and Ezekiel's day, it it encompassed all of North West Saudi Arabia, where Mount Sinai is, and the Midianites and Neom and all that stuff. In that area, the descendants of Esau, the path of Jesus will come in his garments red, the blood of his enemies. That's right. That's why it's called Edom. Esau is Edom, right? Same person. God just gave him another name. Edom means red. Um, yeah. That's not wrong. Hi, Maria. Hey, Maria, bless you. Thank you. Well, we pray with pray with us for sure. Well, thanks, bond servant. Jesus said, all the law and the prophets hung on the two greatest love, the Lord with all who you are, love others, treating them as you would treat yourself. James talks about perfect religion. That's, yeah, right. James is saying, you want, you want true religion? Do this, you know, serve the widows and the orphans in their need. Um, and like, like Von Servant is saying absolutely correctly, the, all that you can say, law, 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 or keep these commandments all you want, but the only commandments that God is really looking at, especially from Gentiles who were not to keep the commandments of, of the, the Levites, uh, is do you love God with everything you've got? And do you love your neighbor as yourself? The, all the, not only just the law, all the prophets, all the scripture of the Hebrews of, of Israel are all about that. That's what God cares about. Do you love him with all you've got? And do you love your neighbor as yourself? And that's not minimizing anything. That's maximizing it. That's like, again, like the parable that we read about in Luke, um, the the Pharisee keeps the law. He's fine. He's He does everything right according to the book, according to Torah. And he ties and he, and he does everything exactly correct. He's not an adulterer. He's not a cheater. He's not a tax collector. I must be righteous for God. No, you're not. So the point is, if you don't, you can keep the commandments, but you're actually not loving God and loving your neighbor. You failed. Okay? And again, that's a that's from his chosen people's uh, view. I mean, that's, that's his view of those who are under the law. And those who are not and never were called Gentiles, Holy Spirit has spoken on this. And I mean that literally. The Bible, the, the book of Acts says, the Holy Spirit said, if you're a Gentile believer, you do not have anything as far as a commandment on you from the law other than don't eat blood or things sacrificed to idols and sexual immorality. Those are pretty general. I mean, you got two real specific things about, about eating like ritualistic sacrifices to other gods. Okay, why would you do that anyways? Uh, eating blood, gross, why would you do that anyways? Uh, and sexual sins, which is a lot, pretty broad. But again, that's not the law of Moses. <laughs> Other than that, nothing else is put on you. That's the Holy Spirit's word on this. The end. Kim says, uh, how can believers who aren't in and around Jerusalem help those in the time of trouble. I don't have the answer for that, Kim. I've been asked a lot, actually, uh, that type of question or that exact question in many ways. Um, all, all I would say, I don't know. You're talking about the time of trouble, right? The final one where it's going to be a very different world than now. And the mark of the beast is going to be here. And the false prophet is going to be here. And the two witnesses are going to be here. 144,000 are, are all sorted out, right? That time of trouble. Um, I don't know if there's anything you could do from a distance, truthfully. like, 
And again, the, the, when I say keep it um, scriptural, the, the stay on that rail of a prepare scripturally, I don't. I don't mean to be arrogant or whatever and say if it's not specifically in the Bible means it's false. I'm not saying that. I don't know that. That's what I'm saying. Uh, right. I'm trying to get across that. If we, if we, if it's not written, we don't know for sure. Maybe it's in there somewhere and I just don't get it. I never I've been unearthed and I've, you know, I've heard people's other folks' opinions on this and to that exact question, they say, oh, well, there's going to be this and that. I don't see that. I mean, I just don't get it. Um, so I don't think there's an answer in the scripture for that, Kim. I really don't. Uh, I don't. I just don't see it there. So either I just don't get it and it's over my head or, you know, it's, a, it's for other people to find out. Um, or it's a no, you can't. Either way, I'm not going to spend my time on it because I've had my fill of that from my life, my personal experiences. I'm done, 1,000% done with conjecture, guesswork, assumptions, going on somebody else's opinions, not the scripture itself. Show me where it says that, right? That's my where I'm at and where I'm sitting, where I'm standing on. And I hope you all are there too. Don't go there if it's not in there, you know? All right. So I'm not, again, so the answer, the very, very long answer to that, <laughs> very long way of saying it's possible, yes, that there will be a, a way that God will expect people who don't, who aren't, literally on the scene in that time of trouble, um, helping the Jews physically escape from their nation. By the way, and I wrote this in Fleet of the Mountains also, it's not about getting them on an airplane because there ain't no airplanes. There's no, when they flee Judea to the mountains, Jesus is serious. He's not trying to fool, mess with your mind and fool you and say, well, I really meant airplanes to Australia. Or America. No, he doesn't mean that. Right? There's no chance of an airplane. They have to physically go out on foot, maybe a car. Okay. Maybe, I guess, uh, some kind of transportation, underground railroad, something like think in that mode because that's what he said. And there's not going to be time. As I said, if you see, once you see this, just drop everything and go. Don't even turn around. Remember Lot's wife. Don't pick up your stuff. Right? Just get out of town. Now, now, now. So that's not time to buy a plane ticket or even drive from Judea, you know, Jerusalem to Tel Aviv and get in Ben-Gurion and hop a plane. That's not going to happen, right? That's not how it's going to be. So if, if you're not on the scene, I don't know. Is it possible? Yes. I just don't know what it is. Um, Holy Spirit could place it on our hearts at that time. That's possible. And I, I'm not saying you have to, we have different walks and we have different talents and we have different relationship with, you know, with God and how he speaks to us. But I, for me, I am not taking that chance at all. I think I think what um and I don't know if I'm gonna be around for it, I could be dead. Just saying this is what I believe it says, so we gotta prepare for that. And if you somebody's in there, let's prove let's show it in the scripture. Let's be Bereans, let's say this is yeah, this is this no, that's not right. Uh or yeah, that's what it says. So let's live that way. Let's live with that reality in in mind that we're going to have, somebody's going to have to do it. Someone's going to have to be there. So pr live like that, donate like that, contribute your time and efforts and money like that towards that. Um, 
anyway, I'm not willing to do that to, to wait and see maybe the Holy Spirit will say something at that time. I think just in my opinion, Kim, and this is, this is not against, this is, this is not against anybody or anything. I mean, as an American, as somebody with comfort here and has been in comfort and knows how wicked that could be. Um, I think a lot of this, this hesitation to actually move or to be somewhere else in the tribulation is just kind of old fashioned fear. Now I, I just, that's just an opinion. I think it's just like, well, I can't possibly, you know, do that. I don't know. I don't know. That's just a guess. Okay. Anyway, I'm done with that. Sorry. Uh, Marion on to addition to that, to a small extent, doesn't even matter if they're God's people, they are people. Okay. Talking about Israel, the physical attacks, which I hear are ramping up even in America are sad. Yes, they are. And they are ramping up and they are sad. And yes, you're just saying, and again, you can't disagree at all. I can't disagree at all, which is they're just human beings, just people unjustly treated because of who they are how they were born or what they're called or they were a kippa or whatever, just on that human indecent evil level, right? Just hating people and physically assaulting them because of who they are, how they were born. Um, just wrong. It's wrong. How could you not take um, measures to stand up for them uh, in every way? I agree with you. And they're God's people. <laughs> um, I would think prayers, as in the sense, are filled with the prayers of the saints. Yes. Winter and nursing makes me think it's on foot. Right, you're talking about, like I just mentioned what Jesus said, yeah. Like, if you woe to those who are nursing babies at that time, woe, ask that you not be in the winter. Exactly. It's certainly... I can't see many applications other than on foot or get in the car and go, but you're not getting anywhere in the car. You hit the Mediterranean. I mean, prayers move the Lord in faith. Amen. 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 So let's leave it at that. Let's leave it at that. All right, friends, I've been on this long enough here. I hope that was helpful to you. Um, Yeah. Be in prayer. If you have any kind of, I don't want to say I'm not taking requests or whatever, but if you have any um, aspects of that, you know, end time prepping that um, you would either think is needed by the body generally by end time church, by you personally, any aspect of that, just shoot me a message um, and, you know, we'll run it, run it by the Lord and see what, see what we get. So email, uh, get me on the app, whatever. And uh, if you want to do that, that's cool. Uh, Bless the Lord for all of you. Uh, You are very, very precious to me, if that matters. Uh, But you're even more precious to the Father. And he loves us to an extent that we cannot imagine. Uh, I really, really believe that because I can't imagine it. I can't believe that he would see fit to use someone in my condition or with my disobedient nature or uh, history. But he does. And he's faithful to forgive us our sins if we confess our sins to him, like John's epistle tells us, right? He is faithful to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we can take that to the bank because it's in the book. Amen. All right, friends, uh, this is the End Time Church. If we have blessed you, please return the blessing, End Time Church slash give, whatever you can would be greatly appreciated. Uh, Share this, tell someone else about it, invite someone next week, and Lord willing, we'll be back here uh, next Monday at the End Time Church. Love you all so, so very much. In Jesus, Yeshua, the King of Israel, be blessed. Bye-bye.